Good morning, everybody. It's nine o'clock, the start of a new week. Um, always remember, nine o'clock is with Father Warner. We are in Monday of the sixth week of Easter, and our text is taken from Acts chapter 16, verse 11 to 15. I'll tell you what the title of the teaching is as we go down into the teaching itself. But let's read our text today. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace the following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in the city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we, were supposed, where we supposed there was a place of prayer and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshipper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira, Thyatira sorry, and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay in my house. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Now, earlier in chapter 16, we were introduced uh, to Timothy, chapter 16, verse 1. Timothy, uh, who was made a companion of Paul and who later Paul would write, that very famous pastoral letter, uh, the letter of St. Paul to Timothy. The letters to Timothy and Titus are called pastoral letters because they were written uh, to address pastoral matters. They were written really uh, to the entire church. Now, we are also told immediately after that that St. Paul was forbidden by the Holy Spirit, forbidden by the Spirit of Jesus, the exact words, to evangelize to Bithynia and to uh, forbidden to evangelize in Asia. Now, whenever you read Asia in the Bible, don't confuse it with our understanding of uh, the geographical Asia that we understand it as today, especially the Indian subcontinent. That's not Asia. Uh, Asia in the, um, in the Bible is really the Asia of the Roman world, which is modern day Turkey. So they were forbidden from going to Asia and the spirit of Jesus leads them to Macedonia. Where is Macedonia? It's in modern day Greece. So they are now sent to Europe, not to the East. Now the same God who calls Paul, Silas and Timothy to evangelize in Macedonia also forbids them to evangelize in, in other regions. So very clearly, what are we understanding from here? that God is in charge of his church. Man is not in charge of the church. This is why church leaders, both lay and ordained, need to be in tune with the spirit of God, not in tune very often with popular opinion. What is God telling me right now? Not what, is, what are people telling me? Very often we get, as, lay, as leaders, as ministers, as priests, we are taken in by the adulation of lay people. Oh, Father, continue this ministry. But it's not serving anybody except five people, and that's not what God may want. Or maybe God is telling us, continue this ministry which is serving only five people. And others may be drawing you to something that's far more fascinating. So listen to what God is saying. Because God's ways are not our ways, and as we've often said, God's thoughts are not ours. Now, I want to draw your attention to verse 12b. We remained in the city for some days. It's a very interesting line in this narrative. So even though God's spirit leads the trio to, Roman, to the Roman colony of Philippi, at that time which was the leading city of uh, the district in Macedonia, their mission is placed simply on pause. We remained in the city for some days. Their mission is on pause. Here's an interesting thought for all of us. It's not only the place of God's choosing that he very often wants us to minister, but it is also the time to act that he decides. It's his choice also of what time we should act. So God's place, God's time. He simply kept their whole mission 
on hold for a couple of days. And if you know Paul, Paul was a man who wanted to be on the move. Imagine Paul simply being told, sit down, do nothing. It's also interesting that while you look earlier in verse 9, Paul was prompted by a vision, the vision of a man, a native of Macedonia, who pleads with him to come, come over to Macedonia and help us. That's the vision he gets. Even though a man appeared to him in his vision, when Paul finally comes to um, Macedonia, it is a woman who embraces the good news. A woman by the name of Lydia. And interestingly, this woman is not a native of Macedonia. She is a foreigner in this land. Now, the text gives us a very, very interesting detail about Lydia. For it tells us that she was from the city of Thyatira. Now, where is Thyatira? Thyatira is in Asia. You see, this was the very place Paul wanted to go to Asia, remember? And he was forbidden to go. God sends him not to Asia, but sends him to Macedonia and Europe. And who does he meet? A woman from Asia. So, we are told that Lydia now listened. She was listening to God's word. She was listening to Paul preach. There was no synagogue there. So, Paul went by the river and there was this woman and she is listening to God's word about what uh, Paul was saying. And this is very interesting. Imagine when people listen to us. We are talking very often, talking in the train, talking in the bus. People are listening to us. What do they hear us speak? What do they hear us say? She is listening. Lydia is listening to Paul. And because Paul is speaking the words of the Lord, the Lord opened her heart. Now, I have often held, and I've said this to you very often, that it is foolishness on the part of many of us to believe that we humans can convert anyone. Humans, and I want to say this again and again, we are mere instruments of God's ultimate mission. You see, while we preach the good news, and perhaps we preach it very passionately, it is foolishness on our part, or on the part of a preacher, on the part of a minister, on the part of a priest, to draw attention to ourselves. Our eyes must, perhaps sometimes, in our foolishness, our eyes are set on the first pew, Oh, what a lovely person sitting there on the first pew, very holy. Where does God set his eye? On, at the end of the church, of somebody who's just decided to come in late for mass, stand at the end of the church. God is directing our, the homily to that person. So, very often as a preacher, it may be my words, but it is his voice that brings conversion. Let me say that again. It may be my words. But who is converting? It is God. My words, but his voice that brings conversion. And maybe somebody who is just watching this video today may have just flipped it on by mistake, is now hearing, not my, may hear my words, but is listening to the voice of God that's touching your heart and bringing about conversion, drawing you back to him. Now, let's come to the text also. The text also tells us that Lydia, this woman uh, in Macedonia, was a dealer in purple cloth. It's very interesting. In an age where women were confined to the house, here was a woman who was a businesswoman, and not merely in some ordinary commodity. We are told that she was a dealer in purple cloth. Purple cloth was a very expensive commodity, one that was worn by the royalty, which was worn by the rich. So, what could we take away from today's readings? What can we learn? Simply this, that any ministry is directed by God. His choice, his place, his time, his person. And in that sense, my dear friends, and this was what brings me to the title which I said I'm not revealing earlier. In that sense, we follow GPS. You and I understand GPS as global positioning system, not global posi positioning system. We need to follow GPS, God's positioning system. 
God who picks us, God who positions us, God who directs us, God who guides us. Don't forget to like this video, my dear friends, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel in just in case you happen to flip on to this channel today. Um, and um, thank you to those of you who continue to support our home in Goa, the Love, Joy, Hope Foundation for Children. Keep well, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow at 9 o'clock with Father Warner.